So this comes from Paul Mason, and I think he's been quite um, he's quite a good um, guy, especially on the left, when it comes to um, pointing out a lot of stuff. Uh, I definitely recommend you go follow him and find out some of his stuff. He's quite good. But uh, this from the eye uh, is opinion piece he wrote. Basically, I think quite freely lays it out. Our critics say Labour left was wrong on Brexit, Corbyn and radical policies. I disagree on all three. So in the wake of the Conservative victory, the Labour left is now subject to three lines of attack. That we should have supported Brexit, that we, should have mo that we have moved too far left and that we should not have backed Jeremy Corbyn. I reject them all. So it is not true we should have supported Brexit. To understand how much, uh, how much bullshit is being talked about Brexit, take a look at the polling averages of 2019 between April and June of Labour's uh, support slumped from 32% to 22% while the Liberal Democrats surged. At the very moment we rejected the second referendum, if we had followed the advice of the Lexiteers, we would have started this election neck and neck with the Liberal Democrats and probably lost numerous activists to the, Green, to the Greens and disillusionment. As a result uh, of the line uh, imposed by Corbyn's inner circle and the General Secretaries of Unite and the Communications Workers' Union, we had to spend the entire summer and autumn fighting to regain the 10 points advantage lost to a Liberal centrist pro-Remain party. That was the time that we could have spent working in, in the constituencies we have now lost. Instead, we spent the summer in the ludicrous, in the ludicrous position, I can't even say it right, <laughs> of worrying about losing Brighton and uh, Bright, uh, uh, of, of losing Brixton to the Liberal Democrats. And it is not true that we've moved too far left. The move to the left on economic policy was not the major problem on the doorstep. Elements of it could have been sold better, but there were too many promises and not enough narrative. The manifesto became, as Richard Tornley compare, um, complained of Lansbury's manifesto in the 1930s, a glimmering forest of Christmas trees with presents for everyone. But a large section of voters wanted only one Christmas present, Brexit, and on, no terms, uh, and on the terms no Labour Party, left or centrist, could agree on. Jeremy himself, however, did, uh, did become a major problem. On the doorsteps of leave areas, I heard time and time again the issue number one was Corbyn and only number two was Brexit. We managed to move the conversation beyond Brexit but not beyond Corbyn. There are many reasons for Corbyn becoming an electoral problem and despite our, uh, our gratitude and solidarity to Jeremy for enduring the last two years, we need to be honest about them. First, the absolute levels of vilification and slander aimed at him by the right-wing media and the neoliberal centre. Second, his indecision over Brexit. For one man, uh, uh, for a man to, uh, oh, there we go, for a man uh, sold to electorate as a, a as a conviction politician to dither for months and months to go into the election neutral on the biggest issue of the day was fatal. Third, his abject failure to get a grip over the anti-Semitism crisis, which became the repetition, uh, uh, reputational damaging for the entire uh, 50,000 activist base. The low point of this was when his uh, advisers tried to rewrite unilaterally into the internationally accepted IR8 definition uh, strong against strong advice. Fourth, his decision to surround himself with people determined to build walls around him instead of alliances and to use the bureaucratic means to impose uh, whole, wholly unsustainable candidates and to delay the selection of candidates to facilitate this. He went into the May EU elections unpopular with Leave voters in the North, and he came out of it equally unpopular with Remain voters of big cities. He abandoned uh, the, main, uh, the mantle of insurgency, but never looked competent in return, and in the campaign he never disavowed the ability to engage voters he showed in 2017. But the bigger picture is this, like it or not there is a culture war in Britain. Corbyn already symbolised the cultural enemy for the express reading nativist workers in places where we've lost. After May, uh, 
for many progressive workers in Labour's big city heartlands, he looked disheartingly in, the ch in championing their values. His strategy was to refuse culture war, but it engulfed him. All of this was clear in the spring of 2019, but for those of us who tried to change things, even minor things like his advisors, we were vilified and excluded by the tight circle of the leadership. So, Jeremy should now stand down. He's done his best with the available situation, but we've been defeated. I want to pay tribute to his resilience and humour in the face of the worst vilification campaign in modern history. I don't want a long uh, interim or period, uh, or period of reflection. We need a leadership contest in which an internationalist left takes control of the party, builds a genuine alliance with the centre-left based on respect and compromise. The new leadership's job should be to cement the left economic program, uh, dem uh, dem uh, democratise the party further and turn it into a mass social movement. Corbynism for about the past 12 months has been less of that of the sum of its parts. Because the pro-Remain internationalist left and the legislators were fighting each other over the most strategic issue. Meanwhile, the party machine remained unreformed, sluggish and inept. It was better than 2017, but on all available evidence, once again, it uh, once again outperformed by momentum in terms of activism, organisation and digital strategy, which is true. Um, clearly, we have to rebuild the confidence and support among many of our voters in the north and middle of England. But there cannot be one step back from our commitment to openness, tolerance, anti-racism and internationalism. To that extent, we cannot regain support in those areas. We have to build a new electoral alliance and potentially a series of electoral pacts based around the promise of electoral reform. I completely agree. Uh, one of the things that I'm heavily going to start pushing on this channel is electoral reform. Um, we need it. Um, in the Tory manifesto, they've said um, they are going to do something about this. What they are going to do, we don't know. This might just be a throwaway line. We well, hope to God it turns out to be a throwaway line. If not, the Tories, with their majority, could set up an electoral system that basically allows them to win every election um, immediately after the last one. And we cannot allow that to happen in our democracy.